What's up everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to talk about a technique that is really good all year round, but really shines in the fall. If you guessed it, today we're going to talk about spinnerbait fishing. And it's kind of a bait that not a lot of people throw, but where I'm from, Indiana, a lot of people throw it. Spinnerbait's kind of a bait that's been forgotten throughout the years because you get new things that come out like chatterbaits and crankbaits that are real shiny and, and really attract the bass fishermen more than anything. But the spinnerbait throughout all the years has continued to catch fish. And today we're going to break down the different things that I do, some of the different baits that I throw, what I like to do, obviously with anything in fishing, it relies on confidence. And if you're not confident in the bait that you're throwing, then you're probably not going to catch fish on it. So I'm going to show you some of the baits that I throw, some of the baits that I'm confident in, and we'll talk about different blade colors. We'll talk about where I like to throw these baits, what kind of rods and reels I throw these baits on, and when I pick certain spinner baits versus others. So. Starting out, I have a box for small spinner baits and a box for big spinner baits, I guess, but they're really normal size spinner baits. So these are all like half ounce spinner baits and above. These are all my smaller river spinner baits. And being from Indiana, we fish the Ohio River a lot, so I have a box designated basically just towards river spinner baits or smaller spinner baits. And those are anywhere from 3 16 up to 3 8 and I keep those in one box and then this box has like half ounce up to I think I have one ounces and this is the biggest one I got it's uh, I don't know how big it is this is a one ounce so I have anywhere from half ounce up to one ounces and we're gonna basically break down when I throw each when I just how I how I go through my decision making on on which spinner bait to throw but First off, let's talk about rods and reels. So I grabbed two more rods, and the reason I throw different rods for each spinnerbait is basically due to the size of the spinnerbait or the cover that I'm fishing around. A lot of times when I fish my smaller river spinnerbaits, I'm gonna throw the Lose spinnerbait rod. And that's a 610 medium heavy, and it's got a little bit more of a tip, so I can do roll cast under like trees and stuff, and I can really be more accurate with this, um, spinnerbait rod with some of these smaller 3 a ounce spinnerbaits or whatnot. Whereas when I step it up to like a half ounce, this thing starts to get a little bit harder to control where I cast those half ounce baits. So I'll step it up to a seven foot medium heavy on my half ounce spinnerbaits or bigger. And that's more of the rod that I would do use for like flipping, not necessarily like heavy cover flipping, but just my normal flipping with uh, just a Texas rig, anywhere from a quarter to uh, three eighths, is what I'll throw a seven foot medium heavy. It's kind of an all around rod, works great for these half ounce to bigger spinner baits. It, it allows me to um, make better cast and have more control over that bait because it kind of weighs, in my opinion, and this may be different for other people, but it kind of weighs down this spinner bait rod and I can't control my cast or make as accurate cast as I can with say a seven foot medium heavy, which is a little bit stiffer of a rod. And this rod here is one I've been kind of messing with. It's a, a seven foot three medium heavy rod and it's a little bit longer. I've been trying to throw some of my bigger baits on it. I haven't really uh, messed with it a ton yet, but typically I throw that seven foot medium heavy on my half ounce or bigger and the 610 medium heavy, which is the spinnerbait rod on the uh, smaller river spinnerbaits. As far as line, I always throw them on 15 pound test. It's just consistent. I just keep it that way. It's just simple that way. I throw Berkeley fluorocarbon. It's a little bit thicker, I think, than some of the other brands out there. I just, that's just what I've used for years and that's what I end up throwing. But reels, um, I like somewhere in between, like a 6-4 to 1 or a 7-5 to 1 gear ratio because I don't want something that's crazy fast unless I'm burning a spinnerbait. If I'm burning a spinnerbait, then I want something crazy fast. If I'm just throwing, just, just normal spinnerbait throwing, I'll throw it on a, just a 
six four to one or seven five to one just middle of the road gear ratio so that i'm not overpowering that uh, bait and i'm not reeling it too fast a lot of times i want to slow roll it by a log or i want to speed it up by the log or or things like that and that middle of the road allows me to either go fast or go a lot slower and i can cover all my bases with that um, that just average gear ratio so let's kind of talk about the different blades that you can throw on a spinnerbait. The three main types of blades that you could throw are a willow leaf, a Colorado, and an Indian blade. And the difference is you can kind of see here, I'll put them in a different order for a reason here in a sec. So the differences that you can kind of see here is this willow leaf is longer and skinnier. The Indian blade is or the the indiana blade is similar but it's more rounded on the end rather than coming to a point the colorado blade is completely round it's almost a circle so the indiana blade is like in between the willow leaf and the colorado the colorado is going to give off the most vibration or the most thump and it's going to slow your bait down more the willow leaf is going to be for fishing a lot faster and it's not going to give off as much vibration but it's gonna give off a little bit more flash. A lot of times I'll throw the willow leaf blade when I'm fishing faster or when I'm fishing around a shad spawn or something like that. I wanna keep that um, willow leaf blade has a lot of flash to it, but it doesn't have a lot of vibration. So you can reel it a lot faster whenever you're reeling it through the water column. And then on the other extreme, the Colorado blade is really good for slowing your bait down. And it, it just adds a little bit of a different um, feel to your bait so it's going to have a lot more thump as it rotates and it's going to let off a lot of vibration and really call those fish when it's muddier water so the willow leaf will work great in clearer water it works in muddier water too because it's still a spinner bait but <clears throat> clearer water the willow leaf shines whereas the dirtier water with this more vibration more of a thump this colorado blade is going to kind of call them in a little bit more and it's going to slow your bait down. So if you step this guy up even bigger and you throw an even bigger Colorado blade, that's going to slow your bait down. It's going to allow you to really slow roll that bait. So if you're fishing around shallow laydowns or something like that, by putting a bigger Colorado blade on there or single or double Colorado blade on there, you can throw that out there and, it, and it, it's got a lot more lift to it. So it'll hold that bait up higher and you can keep that bait really high in some of those shallow laydowns. Indiana blades basically just in between. Obviously it's the same situation. It's gonna have more vibration than the willow leaf, but less vibration than the Colorado blade. It allows that bait to move a little bit faster, but also it allows it to put off a little bit more vibration than that willow leaf. So then there's different variations of blades. You can have the dimpled blades or you can have colored blades or different things like that. And there's different colors, as you can see already. Um, there's just a whole selection of different blade combinations that you can use. I don't get too crazy on this. There'll be certain areas or certain lakes where I will try different things just to see if they'll bite it. I have a box that has just random blades. So for example, this is a Colorado blade and it's hammered brass. And what that means is it's got these little dimples on it. And that's going to actually add a little bit more vibration to that Colorado blade than it already has. So that's another thing that you can do to uh, add more vibration. And if you're in really muddy water, what you're going to want to do is basically just use a single Colorado or, or double Colorado with the hammered blades. That gold or brass color will um, work better in the dirtier water than, say, the silver or a painted blade and just really slow roll that around any shallow cover and you should be able to catch some fish. So then you got like the silver blades and those will work better in clear water. And then you have the painted blades. And I have some that are white, some that are chartreuse, and some that are orange. This orange works really good in the springtime. I like to throw it um, in the early, like pre-spawn time frame. That orange really I don't know what it is about it, if it's a crawfish deal or what, but it really gets those fish's attention and they'll throw it, like for example, this spinnerbait here is a uh, Accent Spring Ding. It comes with the orange one on it. And I'll throw that one a lot in the uh, springtime. And that orange really attracts those fish and they just attack it for some reason. 
certain lakes, so like Tennessee and Kentucky lakes, like Dale Hollow, Cumberland, those types of lakes, for some reason, a chartreuse with a white blade, so a chartreuse blade and a white blade combination with the two willow leaves, I'll throw this on like a, a bigger, heavier spinnerbait. Some of those lakes are really high, highland reservoirs, and they're really deep and clear. So what I'll do is I'll throw, let's see if I can find one here. And this is a um, accent that I actually modified. But what I'll do is I'll take the blades off of my, my original bait and I'll put a big chartreuse one on there and then a small white one on there. And for some reason, those fish really like that, especially on like cloudier days whenever the sun's not hitting the uh, bait and really flashing. It seems like those cloudier days when, you, when you're not getting the flash off your spinner bait from that sun, that those painted blades just really seem to work, especially on those Tennessee, Kentucky lakes where they're, they're kind of, they got a lot of bluff walls and stuff like that. I'll, I'll toss those out as far as I can and, and just reel them down those, those deeper rocky banks. And it seems like those fish will come out of nowhere and attack those baits. So now that we touched on different blade combinations, different blade colors, let's kind of break down the different baits that I like to throw and when I like to throw them. We'll start out with the small spinner baits. A lot of times I like to throw, like I was talking about earlier, I like to throw this little spring ding. And that's a, I think it's a 3 a ounce um, spinner bait. And it comes with a Indiana blade that's in gold and a red or orange uh, Colorado blade on there that's a little bit smaller. The bait, the wire on these things and the wires on these war eagles is uh, a little bit flimsier. So if you catch a bunch of fish, it'll start to wear out and eventually it'll break, but that's kind of, it's kind of a give or take. That's kind of what you want is because these, these baits will perform a lot better than if you just had a really stiff spinner bait. It's not gonna have the, the action or the shimmy as some of these baits that have a lighter wire. So that's why I like the Accent makes a good spinner bait. The War Eagle makes a good spinner bait. <clears throat> And I, I usually kind of stick to those two, but there's a lot of other good spinner baits out there as well. As far as on the river, I like to throw either the Spring Ding or the War Eagle. This is a 5 16 They make a 3 16 as well. So this one actually comes with a Turtleback blade and a small Colorado blade. And the Turtleback's kind of a dip. It's kind of the same thing as a Indiana and a Willow mix. So it comes to a point, but it's a lot shorter and more of a rounded edges than a willow leaf. As far as colors, I like to have a mixture of a bunch of different colors. On the river, I'll throw a black one. I'll throw just a white one or a um, shad colored one or a white chartreuse. Those are pretty much pretty standard. Pretty much everybody's got them or thrown them in their tackle box. They, they work pretty much all year round. And I kind of base which one I throw based on the water clarity and how, how deep I can see in the water. So the, obviously the more shad looking or more natural ones is the clear water. The black is gonna be when it's really dirty and really nasty. So stepping up to bigger and better things, this spinnerbait is one that I actually qualified for the All-American with, and it's basically just an accent, half ounce. That one looks like it's ran into something before but it's got a uh, gold blade up front and then it's got a silver blade, smaller silver blade below that. I'll throw the uh, chartreuse in white or the blue glimmer, or they have some other colors, just straight white. Or like I said, a lot of times on the uh, lakes like Cumberland or Dale Hollow, I'll throw them with a uh, chartreuse and white blade combination like this right here and that seems to work pretty good like that so it's chartreuse and white bait and then you got chartreuse blade and then a white blade those colored colored blades seem to work on certain lakes for some reason i don't know why they just do and then you have some like really heavy baits and the reason you throw those is if you're wanting to burn your bait, but you want to keep it um, at a certain depth, a lot of times I'll throw that and just burn it really high in the water column. But 
by burning it, it doesn't pop out of the water. And you don't want it to pop out of the water because obviously it doesn't look natural at all and you're probably not gonna catch any fish. So deeper, deeper uh, spinner baits can be used for burning or they can be used for fishing um, deeper brush piles. So I actually bought these specifically for fishing brush piles at Lake Eufaula. And what these are, these are one ounce spinner baits. They got big long wires and then they only have one willow leaf blade. And what that does is it eliminates the drag from extra blades and you can launch that thing out there really far. It'll get down to those deeper brush piles in that 10 to 20 feet and then you can slow roll it through those brush piles and hopefully it'll deflect off of everything the way it's supposed to. You don't have any issues. The but heavier spinner baits work good around um, brush piles. Fishing offshore, you can catch them. You can fish around deeper docks or marinas or anything like that. Those will work pretty well. It just gets, once you get into the bigger ones, it's harder to um, skip them in between docks and stuff like that because you've got a one ounce weight you're trying to throw around with two blades on it. So now let's go into the different style of trailers I use and then trailer hooks as well. So trailer hooks, I don't hardly ever throw a trailer hook. If I was fishing in open water, like for smallmouth or something, or if I knew I wasn't around anything, I would probably throw a trailer hook. But the majority of the time when I'm throwing a spinnerbait, I'm throwing it around some type of wood, some type of rock, some type of man-made structure or anything like that. Whether it be a dock, a laydown, a stump, I like to keep it around cover in order to um, get more bites with it. So I don't throw a trailer hook hardly at all. I don't want that bait to have more of a chance to get um, stuck on anything. Now, if the fish are just nipping at it, then it'll probably take me a while because I'm stubborn, but then you might want to switch to a uh, trailer hook because you don't want to keep missing fish. But like I said, I'm, I'm kind of stubborn, so it would probably take me a lot of fish before I would make that change because I just don't like to constantly have it hanging up in the laydowns or the stumps or, or whatever you're casting at. I want to be more efficient and not have to go in there and get my bait every time. As far as trailers to put on these things, um, I have a few different kinds that I like to throw on here. And it's really a personal preference on what you prefer. Obviously a grub is a really good bait to throw on here. So I have a few different colored grubs, white, chartreuse, and then just more of a natural one. And those are easy to thread on there. Pretty self-explanatory. They just, it's just a standard grub. Or you could put like a Strike King Blade Minnow is more of a chatterbait trailer in my opinion. But it works great on spinner baits. It's got a lot of action and sometimes the fish may want that versus a grub or anything like that. It's, it's just a little bit different action. So these are just some of the baits that I throw on my spinner baits. Not saying that one's going to be better than the other. It just kind of depends on the day. Uh, missile baits or a hog form, farmer uh, spunk shad is kind of the same thing as that blade minnow. It's got a, uh, a lot of action in the tail. And when that spinner bait comes through there, it's going to really be vibrating a lot, causing that tail to really move. Or finally, a swim bait. So this is another one that I throw on here. It's a uh, big bite baits cane thumper and that's got that's going to give off a little bit more action than these minnow style baits or a grub it's going to have a lot more kick it's going to move a little bit more water it's going to have more vibration and it's going to hold your bait up a little bit higher the biggest fish i've ever caught in my life i had one of those on there it was muddy water springtime i think it was beginning of april and these fish were just starting to move up but the water was still muddy and I wanted to slow roll a spinner bait. So I, this is a war eagle, I think it's like a waking spinner bait. But as you can see, it's got two huge Colorado blades on there. And then I put a big uh, swim bait on there to kind of slow my bait down even more and create a little bit more drag. And I just launched that thing out there and just slow rolled it real slow by some lay downs. And I caught one at Potoka so Indiana, that was 8.13 pounds and still to this day is still my biggest and it came on this spinnerbait. And as you, as you can see, I was just talking about not throwing a trailer hook, but apparently I threw a trailer hook back in the day because I haven't thrown this spinnerbait since I caught that fish and probably 
one of the last times I threw a trailer hook because I haven't really thrown much, thrown them much since then. But anyway, the, the big fish will really eat a uh, spinner bait. And especially in the springtime, especially in the fall time, especially when the wind picks up, or if you get one of them nasty days where you really don't want to be out on the water, but the wind's blowing, it's cloudy or it's raining, they will eat a spinner bait. So hopefully some of these tips helped you out. Hopefully some of the rods, reels, baits, different uh, information on the blades and colors and, and uh, different combinations helped you out. And hopefully you guys can catch more fish the next time you get out there and you're throwing a spinnerbait around. But make sure you guys like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.